Hey everyone, welcome back to Body Haven Soaps. Today's video is going to be the requested video that I've got a lot of requests for, uh, making that horsetail butter that I used in my shampoo bar recipe. Um, I stated in there that I make my own herbal butters uh, for my products. Um, I make a lot of different ones to bring different properties of different herbs and additives to my products. Um, so we're going to go over how I go about doing that today. So if that's something that interests you, um, stick around and find out how I do it. Um, it's pretty straightforward and simple. You guys will be amazed at how easy this actually is. It just takes a little bit of time. Um, so thanks for watching and let's get started. So first of all, you guys, um, I made... The shampoo bar with that horsetail butter in it now with the horsetail i have right here and it's just a horsetail herb that i put into my mixture of butters and oils and i let that steep for four to six hours okay um at a certain temperature okay so that's the horsetail butter. Now today I'm not making the horsetail butter, but you can do this exact same thing. I have lots of horsetail butter. What I do need to make today is going to be hibiscus uh, butter, and I make this for my hibiscus body butter. So that's what I need to make today so I can get some more hibiscus body butter made. It is getting into the winter season where the body butters are becoming more popular for the dry and damaged skin. So that is what we're working on today. But you guys, basically what goes into um, the butter, we will do this on a double boiler, is you're going to have your mango butter. Now I like using mango butter in it. You could do straight shea butter. Um, the two different things bring different properties, so I wanna make sure that I'm balancing it out and it will depend on what I'm making the butter for. So this is for my body butter. So I definitely wanna use the mango butter in there because it is uh, faster absorbing and not as greasy of a butter. Um, so that's definitely going in today's recipe, but you could absolutely just use straight shea butter, which is what I do for the horsetail butter. So the horsetail butter, I only use the shea butter in. Okay, because I use the horsetail butter for my hair products. Okay, so I will be doing today a blend of the mango butter and the hor and the shea butter. Okay, because I'm making this for a body butter recipe. Um, now, when you buy these, you guys, if you're looking up um, horsetail butter, for one, it's not easy to find all these different types of butters. There's only certain ones out there. Um, and you want to make something specific, this becomes very handy for you. So when you look, let's just take a, I, I've got a couple uh, informative things here. So I looked up horsetail butter, purchasing horsetail butter, um, and the Crafter's Choice brand is what comes up. And it's $80.63 for a five pound bucket of horsetail butter, okay? And then if we look at our mango butter, okay, so with our mango butter for five pounds, looking at the areas where I can purchase this uh, for this bucket here, which is the two pound bucket, I believe, 1.5 kilograms. So, yeah, two and a half pounds. Okay, um, it is 26.70, okay, for two pounds of this. And then for my shea um, butter, we're looking at, and I buy this in the bigger pail, okay, um, but for two pounds, 18.40, okay. Let's go back here and I'll tell you what it is for... So it'll be $42 for two pounds of horsetail butter, okay? And so when you when you figure this out, okay, um, it's way cheaper to buy shea butter and mango butter without that horsetail infused, all right? And then to buy horsetail, this herb here, okay, um, to buy a pound of this, which is a lot, and this is just... 
I bought this in an eight ounce package, okay? But to buy one pound of horsetail, which would go last you several years, um, it's $12. So even if you were to buy one pound of this, two pounds of this, two pounds of this, you would, and, and plus our little bit of um, olive oil I use to loosen this up, um, your horsetail butter is going to end up being 50% less cost than if you were just to buy horsetail butter. So it is really effective to be able to make your own because now you can choose what you're putting into it. Also on your ingredients labels, we can also write down exactly what it is. If you buy horsetail butter, you have to put on your recipe, on your, sorry, your ingredient list on your product what's in that horsetail butter. You can't just go buy horsetail butter and not put what's exactly in that. That's a pre-made product. Where mango butter, shea butter, it is one product. It is not multiple products made into one product. So it becomes a lot easier for our labeling as well um, if you're looking at that aspect of it. So I mean, I will put in, so on my shampoo bar, I put on my ingredients list that I have my, uh, sorry, shea butter, and where's my horsetail, horsetail butter, and olive oil. Um, and that is what goes into making that horsetail butter I add. So the only thing that I have to do is list those three ingredients. There's no preservatives, no additives, none of those other things. I know exactly what's in it. Um, and it's a lot easier for me to do my labeling. So I like that aspect as well. So you can use any of these herbs. That's why I have all of this out here. You can get hemp oil butter. And all that is is shea butter hemp oil that's been blended together. And there is some additives in the stuff that you buy from the stores, which I don't like. So I can make my own hemp oil butter by using hemp seed oil and shea butter and make my own hemp butter. So... It makes things a lot clearer for your packaging. It makes things a lot more natural for our products. We know exactly what's in it and it's really cost effective. Okay, so you can use anything. You can make Jehovah butter, um, any herbs that you want to come up with. Um, you just have to make sure that you list everything you put in on your ingredients label, which uh, as I'm saying is a lot easier. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to move some of this stuff out of my way. All right, guys, so now that I've got some stuff moved out of my way, I'm just going to put my hair up and get my gloves on, clean my hands. All right, so I have my hair up and I have um, my gloves on. Everything here has been wiped down with my bleach solution, then sprayed with rubbing alcohol and allowed to dry. I sanitize everything when I go through this. This is product that I am selling, so I make sure all my surfaces are clean and sanitized, all of the containers I'm using and everything else, okay? So today we are going to make the hibiscus butter that I need for my hibiscus body butter, which will be a video that's coming up, how I make that body butter, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is first weigh out our oils, okay? Or our butters and our oils, all right? All right, so we will start with our shea butter, okay? So shea butter, um, it's very good for the skin. Um, it's really good for older skin. Um, I love using shea butter in my body butters, but it does have a really greasy feel to it. Um, but it has lots of vitamins, minerals, nutrients, um, and really helps with the elasticity of the skin. So that is why I use this um, in all of my formulations. And we're going to just put our shea butter right in here. Now I want to make enough for my body butter and for a few batches because I'll use this through the winter. So in my recipe, and you can size this recipe to whatever you want, um, I simply do equal parts for this uh, shea butter and mango butter. In my horsetail butter, you guys, I just do shea butter, okay, for my butters. 
So I'm going to do, oops, six ounces of the shea butter. All right, so six ounces of shea butter. And then we have our mango butter. Okay, mango butter is an amazing butter. It's really good for the skin. It absorbs fast into the skin and it is full of nutrients um, and vitamins for the skin. So it's great in this. And I'm going to do six ounces of the mango butter. Now we've got six ounces of that mango butter in there, okay? And then I like to loosen this up a little bit with some olive oil. Now, olive oil is really good for the skin. Um, and I always use olive oil in um, all of my skin products. Um, and I will also, in my horsetail butter, you guys, I also do this. So if you're doing the horsetail butter, you would do whatever size batch you want of shea butter. And then for every six ounces of butter, I add one ounce of olive oil. Okay, so I have 12 ounces of butter total, six shea and six mango butter. So I'm going to add two ounces of olive oil. And the reason I add the olive oil, you guys, is it, with shea butter especially, when you heat it up, if you get it too warm, it becomes grainy. We don't want this grainy. So the olive oil helps me regulate the temperature and it loosens the butter up and it makes it a, a smoother, um, nicer butter to work with, okay? So all we're gonna do now is we are going to put this onto our double boiler and start warming this up. We want to melt this down. Now, because I do have shea butter in here, I don't want this to get over 180 degrees, definitely. Um, but I try to steep my herbs, okay, and additives in my butter at around 140, 150. I try not to get it any higher than that. Um, and I find if I get this melted and then I have this on a very low setting, the lowest setting that I can get, it, it stays around that 140 and that's what I want. I don't want this butter to get up to um, high temperatures. It will break down the properties of my butter and my butter will become very grainy and we don't want that. Okay, so we're going to put this on here. Now for the herbs that I add to this one. Okay. So the herbs that I add to this one are pretty straightforward. Um, I'm making a hibiscus butter for um, my hibiscus body butter. So of course I'm going to put in hibiscus. I'm also going to put in green tea. Now hibiscus has some really good anti-inflammatory and it really does help with collagen building. Um, so I have a lot of customers that really like it. it their skin loves it. So I make this butter every winter. Um, hibiscus is an amazing additive. Um, I also have green tea and you guys can, you can purchase these all over the place. Um, I got this from Voyager Soaps. Um, this loose green tea I, I picked up. Um, I actually got this um, from the dollar store. Um, but when you read it, it is simply ingredients is green tea. There is no other additives in here, it is just green tea. 
So make sure when you get it, you're not getting blends. Make sure you know what the blends are. But this is just 100% green tea leaf. Okay. Um, so you can purchase this stuff wherever you like. This is just a, a tea, green tea leaf, loose green tea. Okay. And hibiscus flower I got from Voyager Soaps. And to Hebrew bark is another thing that I add into this. Now to Hebrew bark, um, you're going to have to look for this in a health food store. You could probably order it online. I have a health food store that I get it from. Um, the one thing with with the to Hebrew bark is that you have to make sure that it's actually to Hebrew bark. There is a lot of false companies out there. Um, and this is something that I found out, but I love to Hebrew bark. I actually have a package of this in my kitchen that I make tea with that I drink every morning. Um, that I and I purchased this through a health food store. It is a little bit more expensive, but I love what this does for skin. Um, not making any medical claims here. Obviously, um, I'm not licensed to do so, but I can tell you I had this little eczema patch on my arm, and I had been to several dermatologists. I had tried 12 different uh, ointments and lotions they had given me, and it was just one little spot, the only spot on my entire body. And one day I was making my Tahibru tea um, for my morning because you strain the bark out. Um, I actually took and I made a paste um, with just some of my base lotion and I ground up the bark um, that I'd already steeped for tea. And I had made this paste and I put it in on onto my skin. Now obviously this doesn't dissolve. I put it onto my skin and then I put just a gauze wrap around it. I did that for three days. And that little eczema, whatever it was, spot, uh, went away. It's never come back. I'm just saying that's been a few years. Not making any medical claims. That's just a personal experience that I've had. So I use Tahibu Park in a lot of my products because it's something I've tried um, and I really found it worked for me. And a lot of people like the product, but... Um, that's just something I added, but you have to get this from a health food store, get it from a legitimate um, company to make sure that it's ethnically sourced and that it is actually the Tahibru bark. Um, it is the outer bark that you want, not um, some ground up inner bark or any of that kind of stuff. So I add this into a lot of my products, okay? So with our hibiscus, okay? Um, because I am doing, okay, um, the big, larger batch. You can do this six ounces. I'm doing 12 plus two, so 14. My goal is to end up with uh, 12 ounces at the end of this because this stuff will absorb some of the oil, okay? So in here, we are going to start weighing out our hibiscus flour. And I actually want 20 grams of hibiscus flour. Okay, so 20 grams of the hibiscus flour. To Hebrew bark for this recipe. And you don't have to have to Hebrew bark, you guys. It's something that I use. But you can use any blend of um herbs that you want okay and i have multiple different ones that i make okay for the tahibru bark and remember that the tahibru bark is fairly light okay i'm actually going to add 10 grams of the tahibru bark and then for the green tea leaf, and you can see this is just green tea leaf, okay? For the green tea leaf, I am actually going to add in um, 20 grams. Now, green tea is known for its anti-inflammatory um, and to help with um, impurities of the skin. And it's kind of the background, but the hibiscus is really for the elasticity of the skin. Um, and it also has some anti-inflammatory properties. All right. 
So there is my 20 grams, okay? So this is for anti-inflammatory um, and uh, inflammation of the skin. This is going to be for anti-inflammatory and for bringing, helping the body turn over cells and help with the elasticity, the collagen of the skin. And this I'm adding because of its healing properties um, and its abilities to bring a, a lot of uh, minerals and vitamins to the skin. Okay, anything that comes from nature has got a lot of natural vitamins, minerals, um, and health properties to it. Okay, so that's the purpose I'm using these for this recipe today. Um, but as I said, look up different herbs. You can create whatever butter you want. Um, I will make some more videos on different butters that I use in my products. All right, so simply we're gonna get this melted down. Okay, and it's almost there. Okay, so now that I have this all melted down, I turn this down to the lowest setting I have. Um, I don't want this getting too hot. It is right now at 148. Um, and I turn this down now that it's melted to the lowest temperature I could. Um, and I'm just gonna let that regulate. And I check on it and come in and stir on it once in a while. So now I'm just going to simply put the herbs in, guys. Put those in. Make sure you stir them around, okay, and get them all saturated in the oils and the butters. I'll show you a picture of it here. Okay, so that is what it looks like all mixed in there. We have this at the lowest setting we possibly can. Um, we are going to let this steep for four hours, a minimum of four hours at a low setting, checking the temperature and coming in and stirring it making sure that it doesn't get to those high temperatures and just stirring it and moving it around every once in a while. But we are just going to let this steep in that warm oil and butter uh, for a minimum of four hours, okay? So I'll be back when uh, we're ready to do the straining. Okay guys, now this is done steeping. Actually, it's past done steeping. I started doing this video this morning and remember how I said a minimum of four hours? Well, it's now nine o'clock at night, but I have checked on it throughout the day. I just got really busy labeling, packaging, um, getting orders packaged and ready to go out, those types of things. So my day got a little bit hectic, um, but I can't leave this here, so I need to get this done tonight. So we are going to strain this now. Um, we don't want this to cool off until we have it strained. We want that oil to remain very um, loose, Okay, the butter is very loose so that it strains as much as we can um, and we get as much of the butters and oils as we can. As I said, we'll lose probably about two ounces that's going to be absorbed into this, okay? Grab a paper towel. Okay, so this is still plenty warm. So I turned it off just a few minutes ago. It is at 1.30. Okay, um, I've been stirring it throughout the day. I've been checking the temperature throughout the day. Um, and I kept it at a nice even temperature of 146 throughout the day. So that was good. I just dry this water off so I don't get any water in the product. All right. And compared to what it was before, let me just show you a picture. See that has got a lot darker. There's not no longer a very clear, clear liquid there. Um, and it's because everything's steeping out of all of those herbs. Okay, so that's how that looks. So what we're going to do is I just have this little metal strainer. Um, just pick those up anywhere. And I like to strain it into this. Um, and then I will put it in something to allow it to cool. Uh, um, and then we can use it, but it has to cool first. So let's hold on to your strainer so it doesn't move around. And we're just going to pour all of these herbs in there. Oh, 
Oops. Try not to make a mess. Not sure what happened to my bigger strainer I usually use, but this will work. And I just scrape the bowl out, make sure I get everything that I can. Now, you could just leave this sit overnight and allow everything to steep through because you will still have some that will drip off. As you can see, I still have quite a bit coming through um, out of those herbs and I want all of that to come out. So I'm going to leave this sit for a while until I no longer have that stream. You can see how much is coming out of those herbs. We want all of that to come out. Okay, so I'll leave this uh, strain for a few minutes um, and then I'll come back. Okay, so this has now sat. I've actually went and worked on editing the beginning of this video while this finished to strain. Um, just because I want to get this done tonight. I have appointments tomorrow, so I don't have time tomorrow morning to do this. So this is now garbage. I will just dis disregard, discard this, sorry. So I will discard that into the garbage. Now, as you can see, this is still a liquid form. So what I want to do, that's a beautiful color, right? Um, what I want to do is I actually want to cool this, but I want to cool it fairly quick. If I allow it to just cool at room temperature, um, the different consistencies show up in the butter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into my freezer actually for maybe five to 10 minutes. Once that is cooled to that temperature, I will then pour it out of this into the container that I'm going to keep this in, okay, um, to use for my body butter. So I'll be right back. Let this cool just a few minutes. All right, so I've had this in the freezer 10, 15 minutes. And this is the consistency of it, as you can see. It's kind of gloopy and thick, and that is what you want. You want to cool it down to there. That will prevent it from getting green. If you just leave it out on your counter to cool overnight, which you can, you're going to have more of the chance of those butters becoming grainy. The faster you cool them down, um, the molecules are, are binded, so to say. Um, and that's what the olive oil helps with, why I put the olive oil in there. So I don't get that graininess as it cools down. And once I get it to this texture, my glass is cold from being in the freezer, I am just going to continuously stir this. I'm going to move this so you guys can see. So I'm just going to continuously stir this. As you can see, this is nice and thick. This will turn right into butter, okay? But I don't want it to completely solidify in the freezer just so that it's the molecules don't separate while it cools so I try and cool it down a little bit faster and I'm just going to stir this and you can see it's just cooling off and it's turning into some beautiful butter Once I have it to about this consistency, where you can see it's kind of going opaque color, and it's a green color from the green tea, but don't worry, in your body butter, because you don't make it strictly out of this, we'll be adding other things to the body butter. That's, our, that's a video coming up uh, fairly soon, making this body butter. Um, I only use a percentage of this, and the body butter is going to be um, that hibiscus color. And you'll see there's a few little particles in there. If you wanted 
as you can see there, there's a little particle of some of the herbs. I don't get too stressed about that because I, I make natural products. Um, but you could always filter this through a coffee filter if that was something that you were concerned about. That's not an issue. You'll just lose more of the oils that will absorb into that coffee filter. Okay, so once I have it about like this, and that's about how I want it. I have a container that I purchased mango butter in a while ago. Um, it's empty. These are the little containers that I put my herb oils into. I try to reuse everything um, as much as I can so there's less waste and stuff in our landfills. And I'm simply going to put this in here and I'm just going to leave it at room temperature. It is nice and cold. There is no heat to this anymore so I can put a lid on it and I'll just grab one of my other butters so you can see what this sets up like and then you'll see it when I make the body butter video as well um, how this set right up into a butter everything I can out of there. And every time I make an infused butter, I will make it so it fits in one of these containers. I have a, a few of them and just label them and keep them. Okay, so as simple as that, just one of these. Uh, this is the horsetail butter um, that I made, so you can see it's not as green of a color um, with the horsetail. You can see inside there. This is the butter, and that's how loose it will become, okay, because of the mango butter, but there's no graininess to it. Um, and this tomorrow morning will look just like this. This will turn into a butter, okay? And that is how I make my infused butters. You can do it with any herbs um, or additives that you like. There's lots of options. I will have more videos coming up with different ones that I make. I am just going to leave this out for tonight um, to sit at room temperature. And then it'll be ready to use. Alright, well thanks for watching. If you have any questions or anything, make sure you just ask them down below. I'll answer them as soon as I can. And I hope that uh, you guys gained some information and you enjoyed the video.